I'm here to give a brief introduction about the report. Um, let's first start to talk on uh, the climate change. What is climate change? Climate change is an issue which embodies issue of externalities, common property goods, public goods, renewable resources and non-renewable resources, discounting costs and benefits over time. In order to reduce greenhouse effects and mitigate climate change, some policies makers across the globe continue to seek agreement. <coughs> this has been shown in a report in 1990. Um, uh, it's uh, an uh, IPCC report where some of the countries they were kind of negotiating in order to come to a conclusion. So in 1992, the United Nations Framework Convention was adopted. Uh, this has brought many countries together. The nation who signed for this agreed to develop programs in order to reduce greenhouse effects. Um, so, in brief, this report will actually assess the economic dimension related to climate change. Thank you so much. Okay, so we will try to explain the market failure using an uh, economic model. Uh, so basically, the first graph is about uh, producing electricity using fossil fuel. During that process, there is the emission of CO2. Um, and so this curve right here is the marginal social cost, and this curve here is the marginal private cost. Uh, the, dis the vertical distance between marginal private costs and marginal social costs is known as externalities. So basically, um, marginal social costs is a sum of marginal private costs plus externalities. Um, and ex externalities is um, actually all the uh, costs, uh, negative costs related to property or health. So basically, producers produce at the competitive equilibrium, which is uh, QF1, quantity uh, F1, and at price PC. But uh, to cater for the negative externalities, which they, uh, they, the curve shifts uh, to the marginal social cost, uh, which makes quantity decrease to quantity F2, and price increases to uh, price uh, PE. And now producers are produ producing at the efficient equilibrium. So we have a second graph, which is uh, the production of electricity using alternative fuel. So in this scenario here, uh, there is no externalities, which means that the marginal private costs and marginal social costs are equal, and therefore we have only one line. Um, so producers are producing at the competitive equilibrium, which is right here, at quantity A1 and price C. Um, but because of the policies implemented to uh, reduce the emission of CO2, uh, the, quantity, the demand for uh, electricity using alternative fuels increases. That is why uh, quantity shifted, shifts, which means that it has increased to A2 and therefore price increases to PE. And now producers are producing at the efficient equilibrium. Now Natalia will move uh, to the aggregate market. So now I'm going to talk about the aggregate market. So the aggregate market is actually a combination of the two markets presented before. The producers using fossil fuel market and the producers uh, using alternative fuels market. So the aggregate market, the model has the demand curve, that is this one. So that curve, uh, the demand curve, is equal to the marginal social benefit. So the marginal social benefit basically is the benefit that the consumers have, the society has, when consumers uh, consume one unit of set good, in this case fossil fuels or alternative fuels. We also have two supply curves. I'm going to talk first about this one, that is the SP curve. It's the marginal private cost curve. So the marginal private cost basically is the cost producers have to produce uh, the good. But that cost, it's only for the, produ for the production. They don't have, uh, in this case, in this cost, they don't include the externality. So the, the marginal external cost. Externalities are consequences that happen uh, outside of the, mar the trade in the market, meaning uh, it happens outside of the trade between the consumers and the producers. So it's an uh, effect 
that can it's a consequence that can affect negatively or positively a third party in this case for us uh, pollution is like a negative extra externality so we have here this the, the curve for the uh, marginal private costs meaning no externality costs included so we have the second uh, curve the second supply curve in this curve is the marginal social cost curve in that case you have the marginal social cost is the marginal private cost of the producers plus the marginal external cost meaning you have the costs of the producers and the externalities the cost of the externalities so that's why we have the second curve okay going back to the first curve in this case we have the equilibrium the equilibrium is here where the marginal private uh, cost curve uh, interacts with the marginal uh, social benefit curve in that case this equilibrium here is called the competitive equilibrium uh, that means that in this point the profits the, the profits for the producers are at its, its maximum so in this case we produce quantity c qc at price pc there is a problem with that because since uh, producers in that case don't include the cost of externalities this price sends a wrong uh, signal to the market about how well um, resources are allocated so that's why um, it's, uh, it's sending a wrong signal because they are not considering the, uh, the cost for externalities when implementing um, pol policies like the pollution charge and the tradable allowance the curve shifts because the, the point of those policies, uh, the pollution charge and the tradable allowance, is to reduce the emission of CO2 uh, to the environment. So when you apply those policies, you shift the curve to here, including the, um, the, the costs for externalities. So when you shift the curve here, you achieve a new equilibrium, meaning an equilibrium here, again where the, the curve for marginal social costs meets the marginal social benefit curve this equilibrium here it's called the efficient equilibrium so we have another qu this is the quantity produced at this price so in this case the resources are allocated efficiently and the costs of externalities are considered so it's important to notice that the price at PE, the price at the efficient equilibrium, uh, is um, higher than the price at the competitive equilibrium. The reason for that is because at the efficient equilibrium, uh, the producers uh, are including uh, the, the costs for externalities. That's why there is a rise in the prices. Okay. That being said, and as I said before, there are two market-based um, market policies that governments are using to try to reduce uh, market-based approaches, I'm so sorry, uh, that, the, the produce, that the governments are using to control the emission of CO2. The, two of those approaches are the pollution charge and the tradable allowance. So, the pollution charge basically are taxes that the, the, the government can implement uh, on products or on emissions. So for this case, I'm going to talk about uh, taxes uh, charged over products. Also, the tradable allowance is basically uh, an exchange of, uh, of allowances between polluters so if you have a company that uh, after receiving the des designated amount of um, permits to pollute and if they pollute less than that they can actually sell those permits to other companies that pollute more and that's a win-win uh, game because the polluted the, the companies that pollute more can actually buy uh, these permits from companies that pollute less and they actually, uh, it's advantages for them because they don't have to pay a fine for going over 
the quantity allowed for them. That being said, I'm going to talk about the pollution charge and Divya is going to talk about the tradable allowance. So the pollution charge, like I said before, it's the pollution for it's the tax that governments can uh, charge over um, over products or over uh, emission. So for the case of CO2, the emission of CO2, we are going to talk about three product charges. Basic um, the three product product charges that we use to deal with CO emissions are gasoline tax, BTUs, uh, and carbon tax. So the gasoline tax basically is a tax uh, per unit tax that is charged over the gallon of gasoline. BTU uh, is uh, per unit tax also that is charged over the heat, uh, the amount of heat uh, content in the fuel. Uh, and it's measured by the British thermal unit. Uh, and the carbon tax is the, the is charged over the carbon carbon amount uh, in the fuel. So that being said, the gasoline tax, although efficient, uh, it's not the best way to deal with the carbon emission just because it only considers polluters that actually burns gasoline but it ignores uh, polluters that actually burns other fossil fuels like coal and oil. So that's why it's not, um, it's not efficient enough. As for the BTUs uh, and the carbon tax, both uh, have the same aim of reducing the amount of CO released uh, into the environment. Uh, the carbon tax is actually more efficient uh, because it's more specific. Uh, that's why it's so popular and that's why people actually, governments actually prefer using those taxes uh, to control the, the carbon emission uh, to the environment. I want to show you, so this is actually a, a model for uh, per unit uh, taxes. So uh, as said before, we have a curve here of marginal private cost. Again, the marginal private cost doesn't take into consideration the externalities. It only takes into consideration the, the, the cost of the producers to produce one good. And we have the marginal private benefit curve uh, that is equal to the marginal social benefit. Again, it's the, it shows how uh, the benefit consumers have of consuming one unit of that good. When you implement per unit taxes like the carbon tax, the curve shifts again here. So you have another uh, equilibrium. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that here. We have again the competitive equilibrium and here we have the efficient equilibrium. And here we have what would be the marginal social uh, cost. Again, you find the new, the best point here got to say that actually when you have on this graph the curves intersecting here at the competitive equilibrium where the profit is at its maximum uh, although the profit is at its maximum because of the damages to the environment and because you're not considering those costs you actually have too much of that good being produced that's why when you shift to the uh, um, efficient equilibrium the quantity is reduced from QC to QE. Okay, so um, like I said, the, the model for the private, uh, for the per unit uh, taxes. Thank you, now Divya is gonna explain about the um, tradable allowance. So the main aim of tradable allowance system is to control uh, global warming. Now, tradable allowance is when the government this at a maximum value for the amount of uh, in, uh, environmental damage that can be caused. Now, this, this maximum value is been distributed in segments to different organizations. Now, there are some times when some organization, they surpass their own allowance. So, at that time, these organizations, they have two options. One is that they construct a cleaner creation line. In this, they'll pollute less. And, but if this option is expensive, they can opt for the other option, which is they purchase allowance from other organizations. Now, market operates in the same way as organization. Trading takes place at national and international level. And nations can earn credit 
for activities like reforestation. Now, Nanoskar, she'll continue with the key learning. So, as a result of our research, we, we reached three major key learnings. The first one is that through the economic analysis of climate change policies, we can reach an allocative and cost-efficient market due to it being a market-driven approach in, where, in which uh, the government sets uh, procedures to uh, prevent polluters from damaging even more the environment and uh, due to their production process and also allows them to be profitable. The second learning was that there's both advantages and disadvantages for applying um, policies such as pollution charges and the tradable allowance system. As an example of this, we got, as Natalia said before, that uh, uh, for pollution charges, we got the narrow scope of the gasoline taxation in which only uh, polluters that emit carbon dioxide from burning gasoline are taxated, but not those that are, are burning uh, other fossil fuels such as oil and coal. And the third learning we got was that there are still companies nowadays that are refusing to use and um, um, incorporate abatement activities to their uh, processes of uh, production processes due to the high cost it means for them um, but since now the um, mentality of the world is focused and concerned for the environment they're trying to they have no other choice than to start adapting the policies implemented by the governments all around the world